of citizens of Uganda, my fellow Africans, international citizens and friends of Uganda, members of the press and the diplomatic community. I am making this statement while under house arrest. My home is sealed off and I'm not allowed to leave, nor is even anybody allowed to come into my residence. I'm also under some kind of electronic blockade. I'm unable to access the internet services in my house. It is under these circumstances which have been existing since I was brought back from prison last night that I have had the Electoral Commission declaring the final results of the presidential elections of 2016. We have just witnessed what must be the most fraudulent electoral process in Uganda so far. We participated in this process well knowing that it was inherently fraud because of the lack of freedom in our country, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, freedom of movement. Uh, in fact, this lack of freedom has now been put in law, although it existed even without the notorious Public Order and Management Act. So we had very restricted period before the campaigns, during the campaigns, and as you can see, even after the campaigns. We have an election that is organized by a body that cannot, by any stretch of imagination, be considered as independent. The Uganda Independent Electoral Commission, which is appointed by one of the candidates and which serves at the pleasure of that uh, candidate who is the president. And uh, we have indeed witnessed in this, as in previous elections, officials of this commission acting in a clearly partisan and activist manner to promote the interests of one candidate. We, at the beginning of this election, knew that the military and security institutions in this country have been doing everything they can to bias uh, the environment in which an election is conducted. We have a media that is not equally, equitably accessible to all the participants uh, in the political processes of our country. I, before this election, and during this election, have been stopped from uh, accessing radio programs. I have never accessed any of the government media except once when the person that aired in hosting me was promptly sacked. This election is indeed conducted in an environment where we have government structures that are fused with the NRM structures. In fact, the most important state structure, which is the structure at the grassroots called the local council one, is a council that was formed before what is now built to be a multi-party dispensation. It was, they are structures of the one-party NRM state. They have never been replaced. And these are the ones that carry out voter registration, European voter registration, and many other functions that affect uh, the elections 
that happened in this country. This election indeed was going to take place in an environment where state funds, public funds, are freely and opulently used by the ruling NRM regime uh, in their partisan uh, activities. So ladies and gentlemen, we knew that this was the situation and part of our participation in this election was indeed to expose what the environment, the political environment in our country is uh, for everybody who cares uh, for this country to understand. And I believe that uh, the elect this uh, just ended election has indeed demonstrated that. On the just ended electoral uh, process, the Electoral Commission uh, first attempted to deny any Ugandan the use of a telephone or a camera around the polling areas. Again, this was in a blatant attempt uh, to, to impede transparency of the election. Uh, when that failed, the social media platforms we are all switched off and up to now have not been uh, restored. This indeed was also designed to impede transparency.